Now I'm going over this thing about election because okay, I'd like this thing to sink into us if that's okay, and hopefully I, I do, I'll get through it all this morning. But anyway, it's about election. And it's kind of like a focus upon it because election is by grace, okay, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, just like we were talking. And those who are elected of God will begin to show these attributes. I don't mean in a day, you know what I mean, but they will come forth. There's certain fruit that comes with election, okay? Because election is Christ doing things, not us. <clears throat> and it becomes the fruit. It's like anything, you know. No matter what I do, I can't make fruit come forth in any tree out there, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But them trees out there, simply not of them might be, they've been elected for a particular purpose, like apples and pear trees and orange trees are elected to do that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. They've been elected by God. <clears throat> so we're looking at election in its purest, simplest form, okay? But there's also something else about election we need to know as well. So I'm going back, I think that's the fourth one. I go back over one or two of that just to kind of, yeah, kind of get, deal with this as a kind of a separate subject, okay? All right? Yeah. But the Lord blesses me, this is going to be deep, okay? It can be deep. Okay? Yeah. And if... <clears throat> Okay, consider the course which has been placed upon the body of Christ by the ministry of the mainline denomination church by telling saints that they are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood, okay, <clears throat> and a holy nation. And that's fine, they are, but the point is you don't give the, the don't put the substance into it. You know what I mean? Because that's the calling and that's the cho God's choice for, for the church. But you, putting the substance is the understanding. The understanding is the substance of all of that. You know what I mean? Like, of what it means to be chosen, you know, the understanding behind it. Instead of going, oh, I'm chosen, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. So it's totally the understanding is the substance of it, you know. Walked into you, you realise, oh, right, yeah. Kindness, gentleness, you know. Mm -hmm. Non-suffering, patience, yes. yeah. That's the substance mm -hmm. of all of the grace of God. If, if that's not coming into your life, then you're just talking about grace. You know what I mean? Like, and you don't really know what it is, you know. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because like, the substance of it all, the understanding is that people who are going on with God and are imitating and the followers of Christ and are imitating Christ Jesus, laying down their life. Okay, I don't mean going and killing themselves, but laying down their life in the ordinary, most ordinary things of life. Being able to lay yourself down, okay, and take the place of weakness and humility, okay, <clears throat> putting others before yourself. You don't get that in a day, so you don't. No. You don't even get it off your parents. <coughs> you get you get good things off your parents, okay? And that's the number, number G fifteen eighty six from the Strongs. I've been doing that quite a lot recently. It means chosen elect eclectus. Eclectus, okay? <coughs> you know the way you say some people are eclectic, okay? Mm. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they stand out. <laughs> but these people stand out as well, okay? <laughs> so Romans 11, <clears throat> that also means favour or chosen elect, but not in the sense that you had anything in yourself, okay? It all falls back on Christ's election, okay? Romans 11, 3 to 6, Lord, this is where we come from, we come from this. These are very controversial verses, okay? Romans 11, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. That came from Elijah. <clears throat> Paul is drawing from the story of Elijah, what happened to Elijah. And then Elijah says, I'm left alone. He thought he was the last, the last man of God on the planet, okay, at that, at that point in Israel. And they seek my life. Okay, so God comforts him and says, but What says the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself. Now that's an extraordinary thing. I meant to put that in capitals as well. When God says, I have reserved something for myself, no matter what happens with others, I have reserved some to myself, okay? That's like you saying, <coughs> I'm putting on a party tomorrow, I'm going to put everything in front of everybody, but I've kept back something in case there's nothing left for tomorrow, okay? You're reserved for yourself, in the, on the basis that tomorrow's another day. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've kept back something, you've given everything to everybody, you've kept back something for yourself because you also have a plan for tomorrow. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's the simplest way I can put it. 7,000 men, okay, who have not bowed the knee to, to the image of Baal, the god of this world, 
that doesn't mean they did didn't didn't do it at all okay but what it means in the heart they haven't they've struggled and they've come to the place where they ultimately they're not bowing the need to bail they're not giving in at any point you know mm -hmm. they didn't find that easy but the point being that that was their decision in life and they overcame okay well <clears throat> so god has kept a number of people for himself is there a significance for the number seven thousand necessarily well, I didn't look into that title no, too, okay. Rosie, but the number seven in the seven tells you something yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I can look into that, by the way. Oh, no, you don't. But that's a very big number. <clears throat> but I let my bank account now, I'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> the image of Baal, which is the God of this world, verse 5, even so at this present time, this is very interesting, okay? Mm. So we know that in every, in every, <coughs> not so much, in every century or all the way back, because the church began in the Pentecost, okay? And we're looking at the church, because God's taking the people today out of the church, and the overcomers of the past in Hebrews chapter 11, okay? Even so, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And there you know straight away <coughs> that election and grace are connected you know, supremely together, election and grace, because God elects people by grace, okay? And that's, that's what we're going to look into that the best way we can, okay? Because yeah. it's important. And if, by, if it is by grace, then it is no more, and then he explains what grace actually is, okay? So it is it's no more of works, works meaning is nothing to do with you, okay? Because obviously works and, and us are the, are the same thing. The flesh and works go together. So us being originally of the flesh, okay? So therefore it's no more of us. Moses simply says no more of the flesh if it's by grace. <coughs> and he's saying that for a very good reason because he's after mentioning election of grace. And he's trying to communicate to people that it has nothing to do with you, okay? So you need to get, get as we keep on saying, you need to get over yourself. Okay, <clears throat> as if you have something to do in this. Okay, it's nothing. So it's not of you. <clears throat> it's, if it was of, of you, then it wouldn't be anything to do with grace. Okay, as works and, and you are the same thing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, work is no more work. Okay, what then? Israel had not obtained it, <clears throat> the Jewish, the Hebrew nation, that which he seeked for, but the election <coughs> had obtained it. And the rest were blinded. Now that means that in God's economy, God has foreseen and foreknown the people who will ultimately rule and reign with him, okay? And it wasn't Israel as a natural nation, okay? Now there are Jewish people included in, in the elect, if you know what I mean. But not just Israel in the sense of Israel after the flesh, if you know what I mean, like national Israel, okay? So that's what we're looking at. <clears throat> Looking, looking into that, and it will probably be on it next week, I suppose, as well. But look, things so God has reserved for Himself, and that's what we understand to be the priesthood, the kings and priests, the royal priesthood, the chosen generation, okay. And that's what chosen is the word chosen means elected, okay. <clears throat> Inheritance are people who are saved by the sufficiency of grace alone, and that's because that's what we're looking at, that's what the holy of the grace is sufficient. And Paul said there was a crown <coughs> waiting for him. Remember, crown of gold waiting for him, an overcoming crown. So he, he was looking at himself, he lived by grace alone. Grace meaning it was just, the, it was just the act, the work of God in his life, okay? And only the work of God. And I'm not saying he never failed. I'm not saying that. I'm just simply saying that over, overall, the grace of God brought him through everything, okay? So <coughs> it was the sufficiency of God's grace. Remember he said that? And he discovered the, the thorn in the flesh, <coughs> then yeah, Jesus right. told him, my grace is sufficient for you. Yeah. Okay, and then he, he realised that God's strength is made perfect in weakness, okay? Everything I have read, <coughs> sorry, no mixture of work, sorry, sufficient of grace alone. And that's what we're looking at, election, isn't it? Okay, okay, just to awesome. lay that down as best we can. So everything I have read and studied always fell into the category of God selecting particular persons, okay? You know, I, I, I've elected you, John, okay? Man. You, had, right. you had good reason to select me. <laughs> You're refusing what the gospel there, John. <laughs> that's, that's exactly why I elected you. <laughs> 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 
He chose us before time began, mate. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Particular persons as his elect, okay? And now we're looking at that now. We're going to look into that best we can simply because he was God and that was the end of it. I'm God and don't you. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I like that laugh. <laughs> That's the last word. That's it. In other words, we have no part whatsoever in it, okay? That's just all, just drawing upon these points. Mm -hmm. And even countless regenerated saints, okay, have no part in it. So is this true? <clears throat> what about winning our race and what about refusing to nullify the grace of God? Because we're told in the word of God to <clears throat> run to win, okay? To run your race to win. And the race is a grace race, okay? It's of God's mercy. So it's all of grace. The race is all of grace. So you have to make sure I'm going to go to win. How? By not doing anything of myself. By trusting implicitly upon God alone. Okay, because I know you can say they're going to run to, you start putting effort into it. But that's not the idea. Point. <laughs> the other thing about it then is, is showing yourself weak and dependent upon God in every situation. Okay? So you throw yourself into complete dependence, okay? Because that's what grace leads you into. Grace leads you into weakness and dependence and not being self-sufficient, okay? Yeah, are we all right? Yeah. yeah. So that's the, that's the way you go about winning your race. So therefore, it's the, it's the awakening to what grace actually is, okay? <clears throat> and refusing to nullify grace. Because when you start doing things of yourself or, you know, getting upset about things, you're now beginning to nullify the grace of God in your life, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> That's what nullify. Remember we said that in Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I do not nullify the grace of God. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So they, he said, I do not nullify. In other words, I don't start opposing God. <clears throat> I stay in God's presence. I rejoice in him. I glory in him all the time. I give thanks and praise to him all the, in all things. So he makes sure of all of that, you know, so that he knows that he's weak himself. There's nothing he can do about anything except by grace, okay? Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 2, 11 to 14, for the grace of God that brings us salvation. And we're looking at, again, election. Grace, election comes by grace. Only by grace, okay? So the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Okay, so therefore grace... Election has appeared to all men. It doesn't mean God has chosen to elect all men. But it's, this is very interesting, okay? So everybody has been elected, <coughs> not just at the same time, of course. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I've elected the whole lot of the one big gang today. <laughs> People have elected in God's foreknowledge at a given time, you know, down through the ages and so on. They've been elected in God's foreknowledge. So they're not all appearing at the one time. You know? So there's got to be a lot of them thrown into the lake of fire. <laughs> That's all we're saying, yeah. So, <clears throat> so uh, he has appeared to all men. So everyone has been elected, just not at the same time. And verse 12, teaching us, and that's what grace does, okay? Election teaches you that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, okay? We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, okay? So that's what... It teaches everybody. Grace comes into kindness comes to everybody yes. in different ways and so on. Okay, <clears throat> God's kindness. And it's very very simple. And I, I was taking a look at that because you might be thinking he didn't do that for me. You might be in a very bad situation, you know. But then you <clears throat> you have to consider that there's something we'll be looking at. Okay. For sure. So looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of. Great God and Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. So grace does that in you too. Takes your focus off him. You're looking for the Lord then, okay? Mm -hmm. Your focus is beyond yourself. Looking, always looking for the Lord. His appearing, okay? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, his final, <coughs> fully, full appearance, okay? Amen. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from iniquity and purify unto himself, okay? So he's not just purifying the people, for the sake of them being pure. He's purifying them unto himself, okay? <clears throat> As a peculiar people, his own people, okay? His own mm -hmm. people. Zealous of good works, 
you know, consider Abraham. And that grace appealed to all men, because even Abraham didn't have a Bible, as you know, nor a New Testament, an Old Testament. And he had no prophets around him, and, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. But yeah, he got visions and got word from God and lived by him on the promise of God. Okay? So just that's what we mean by all men. In any situation, okay? Grace is available. It's the understanding of it, you know? Okay? And hopefully we get a grip on that this morning. Mm -hmm. If not, <clears throat> in due course, okay? Mm -hmm. now, this is John chapter 6, just looking in behind it, behind it, behind grace. Jesus was speaking to the people, and therefore answered and said unto them, Mormon not among yourselves. You know, Mormon, mumbler, they're all talking or something. What's he mean by that? You know, what's he mean by that, you know? Mormon, okay? And I put in the thing, a lot of people are mormoning today about election, okay? <laughs> Who are the elect? <laughs> <clears throat> and then Jesus said in verse 44, you know, just to get an understanding behind it, no man can come to me, okay? Except the Father which sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So you're getting an insight, first of all, you're getting to grace means that there's nothing in you that you can't even go to God yourself, okay? You can't. You, you don't have the ability to go to God or to find him yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, some, you talk to someone about God, so wait up, God. <laughs> there is no God. What God? Where is he telling himself? <laughs> You know, so you can't come to him of your own strength. You don't have sufficiency in yourself. There's nothing in you that will ever bring you to God. Any, any idea or thought that you have, okay, unless the Father draws you, okay? Mm -hmm. So the Father has to draw you. So he has to do a walk in your life. It has to begin with him, begin with God, and God says, I'm going to call John, okay? So he begins to do a walk in John. And you might, you might meet someone down the town in Chastia, but the Lord no. And then maybe a while later on, maybe even a year or two, he gets it, says something else to you again, okay? Mm. And then he meets you somewhere else again, and then something happens to you, and he does something for you. Now you're, be you're beginning to turn your head slightly, you know? You know what I mean? Like, mm. He's drawing you. He, can, he draws. He got me in a moment. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there's different ways that he draws people. And over a period of time, situations in their life, he gets the person's attention, you know? Mm. And he's drawing them. And they're coming into faith now. They're beginning to believe. You know what I mean? And that all began with God. You were going your own way, happy as hour or whatever. And God started working. He started calling you. Understand? Yeah, so nobody, you couldn't come to God. It was mm -hmm. all begins with God. That's what grace. So everything about grace comes from God. Okay? There was no idea that you got. Oh, I had a great idea one day. <laughs> and if it was a great idea, it was God who gave it to you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, are we alright there? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and I will raise him up. But again, I will. It's all about him. I will, I will do this, I will do you know what I mean? Like, I will raise him up on the last day. Yeah? Yeah. Are we alright there? Yeah. 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 So it begins with God. God is the initiative in the whole thing. That's really and that's why he then he goes into the scriptures. It's written in the prophets. That they shall all be taught of God. So God takes on the job of teaching every person individually, okay? Now I might be up here talking, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're not going to hear anything unless, <laughs> unless God yeah. talks to you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Likewise for all of us, you know. That's true. <clears throat> I could read a, thousand, read a thousand books or whatever, you know, and learn absolutely nothing until the Lord showed me something. Yeah. You know? then, yeah. it, all, yeah. it all goes back to, to God, okay? So they'll all be part of God, and every man therefore that has heard, okay, and has learned of the Father, okay, that's lovely, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Learned of the Father. So God is teaching and learning. He comes unto me. So if a person doesn't end up going to the Lord, they're listening to something else all the time, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It could be anything, different religions and so on, okay? But if it doesn't bring you to the Lord Jesus, you know that they're not listening to the Father. Okay? Mm. All right, sorry, sir. Yeah. Not that any man <coughs> has seen the Father, nobody has seen the Father, save, that which is, save he which is of God. He had seen the Father. Okay? Jesus. Glory to God. And he was the only one that had seen the Father, am I? Mm. Now, when Jesus came, he brought a whole different faith, okay? It was a whole real faith of living right now <coughs> in the very presence of God and God living in you, you know? So John chapter 12, again, 21, 23. <clears throat> Remember he said, Now the judgment of this world, 
Now shall the prince of this world, okay, Satan, be cast out, which he was, because that was the end of all flesh. When he was lifted up on the cross, it was the end of all flesh, and flesh is the instrument of Satan. So he, he stripped him, he was powerless, he had nothing. Okay, nothing before God, he had nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. Nothing to years, it was all gone, you know. Extraordinary way to take everything away. Yeah. <laughs> he was, the Bible says he was disarmed. That's right. He was totally disarmed, he had nothing, okay. <clears throat> now shall the print of this world be cast out. I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw, will draw all men. How much clearer can that be, you know? Mm. Yeah. And the people are still fighting this today. I fought with myself because I didn't know all the scriptures. Mm. I still don't know them all. But will draw all men unto me. <clears throat> this he said, signifying what death he should die. So you can be absolutely confident that God ultimately, not necessarily now, is going to draw all men to himself. Yeah. Okay? It's written there in black and white. Mm. Read your Bible, you can see it. Yeah? I will draw. And if he drew you and drew, he's going to draw his worst enemies. Think of some of the enemies they've got. That's true. Think of some of the worst people that we think, in our ways, who have ever lived in history, okay? <clears throat> you can think of a few. Yeah, that's easy. Oh, he's going to Because he put his sin away just as surely as he put your sin away, you know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's an exceptional thought, an ex exceptional, you know? So there you go. So you, you have no anxiety in your life at all about anybody. Okay, God, all things with God is possible. So therefore we know he can do it. He wouldn't have said it if he couldn't do it. Because he has foreknown all things. Okay. <clears throat> Imagine the whole idea of God just guessing, oh, I'm going to do my best. No, it's not about doing his best. Okay. Mm. It's not doing his best. He has foreknown. He knows what he's capable of. Do you know what I mean? He knows all them things. So therefore, he just says it, I will draw all men. And he sees the end from the beginning. The Bible says all that, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, you can rest. Otherwise, you would never find rest in God. You wouldn't find rest in his world. You'd always be wondering, no, is he still, is he going to make it? Yeah, <laughs> you know? Other than that, he wouldn't be God. You'd say, well, you're worshiping the wrong God if you think that. You know, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So you can let the whole team go and start listening then. What is it today, Father God? Have a mind the end. You can let it all go and say, God has it all in his hand. And we're just listening for his voice now, you know. There are many for today, okay? Yeah. That's it. Today I'll be hearing his voice. All right. Amen. Election, that's what we're after seeing, is the initiative of God alone in Christ, okay? It's God in God's initiative. What he has chosen. In other words, we call it sovereignty. God is sovereign, okay? Now one of the things, <coughs> God does, a, we know in the world, the Bible says he does an awful lot of things. He can bring diseases and all kinds of things. And, and uh, all kinds of acts of judgment in the world today. And, but the most important thing about all of that is, person judge the act, but you can't judge the act, okay, on its appearance without knowing the heart behind it, okay. Because the intention in anything, the intention behind something, I can intend something and miss the mark because I don't know all things. I don't know the end of a thing. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't, <clears throat> but in God knows the end of it, so God's intention is always good. Yeah. He's always intending because God is good mm -hmm. and God is love. So the intention is always good, even though it appears mayhem to us now. But the end of it, we will say, God was right. He was right. That, he walked all that to the good. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But therefore, he says, trust in me. <clears throat> and don't lean on your own understanding. Okay? Yeah. That's wonderful. Do <laughs> you understand what we're saying? Because if you start judging things, yeah. you start judging things in your own understanding, what's going to happen is you're going to fall away. You're going to join the, the rebellious ones. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But if you're trusting in God and in his word, his intention is always good. And not to be gone by the appearance of a thing, okay? I mean, even, I remember saying before, if I go out and kill somebody in a wardrobe, <coughs> but a judge can, can sentence a man to death, mm. he's not guilty. He can go to bed at night and not lose a night's sleep. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Because he'd been given authority to do that very thing. Likewise, God is judge of all the earth. From the, from the beginning of time, if you want to say, at the end of time, 
He's a judge of all the earth, so he takes sole responsibility, okay, <clears throat> and sovereignty for absolutely everything. God is responsible for all things, ultimately, okay? If you can't do that, you can never find rest. If not, you'll always be wondering, oh, that doesn't look good to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, welcome, Peter. <laughs> We're looking at studying the election, okay? Okay. <clears throat> election, well, I'm telling you, we'll get into it as best we can and open, opening up this can of <laughs> worms that has caused confusion all over the place, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then he says, uh, yeah, just everyone has been elected, not, not, just not at the same time or in the same age, okay? <clears throat> So therefore, it's the working out of a purpose. God has a purpose behind all things. And it's an eternal purpose, okay? Ultimately going on into eternity. So we see that now, so that if you start trying to judge everything in this age, you're in trouble, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15, 23. And then he says, there it is, that every man in his own order. Every man means every man. I will, remember we said that a few minutes ago, I will draw all men to myself, okay? And then at the end of 1 Corinthians 15, it talks about Jesus reigning and putting all things under his feet. And this was the order Paul came up with. Every man in his own order, okay, ultimately will be find repentance and be reconciled to God. Christ, the first fruit, that's Jesus himself. Afterward, they, that's his elect people, they that are Christ, at his, is coming, because he's coming all the time. Okay, he's coming in as people first. So that word should be parousia, by the way. Parousia. Parousia is present, at his presence, okay? So the understanding of God's election has been corrupted by the false gospel of damnation, okay? Mm. People that <coughs> in hell of the great majority of billions of people in a, in a place called hell. Mm. I remember saying it before, I remember seeing it read somewhere, I don't know if it's true or not, but approximately on the earth, they estimate there's been about 160 billion people from the beginning of Adam, okay? Mm -hmm. 160 billion. Put me seven or eight billion at the moment, is that on the planet? No, <coughs> Adam. Nine billion, isn't it? Is it? Seven is billion, it nine? yeah. Growing all the time, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it's time to get off. <coughs> yeah, <man>. yeah. <laughs> we can see straight away that, you know, the vast majority of them would be going to hell for eternal torment, okay? Mm. It's a gospel that's been proclaimed at the moment in the main mainline churches, it's true. The vast majority of them, okay, are going into hell for eternity. That's some, some thought, isn't it? <clears throat> so therefore, that's what has corrupted the election part of it. Because people think election are the ones that get saved <clears throat> and the non-elect are the ones that are going to hell. But that's not what the bit at all. Election is to do with it, take God taking the people out, reserving the people for himself. What? To guarantee his purpose. To guarantee his purpose, okay? Because <clears throat> again, he takes full responsibility for the outworking and the completion of his purpose. Mm -hmm. And he's getting the people for himself. We look at it all the time. The words kept coming up for himself, for himself. His own people, his own priests. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're all for him to work out his purpose on the earth for everybody else, okay? You with me? And, and this age has been dedicated, okay, this particular age from the church has been dedicated for God to join people, his own people, sons, in the exact image and likeness of the son, okay, bringing forth sons in the image of the son, and they're all of one. And Jesus is preeminent, he's not over them, he's preeminent among them, mm -hmm. which means you're being brought to the same glory as the Lord Jesus Christ himself, all the same glory, but he is preeminent. And you know, <clears throat> that's hidden today from, from enormous numbers of people. Mm. They keep putting Jesus into this trinity, you know. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's separating them all the time. And he came down from heaven not to be separate. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like? Mm -hmm. Not to separate himself like some idol. <clears throat> Do you yeah. know what I mean? He has come in to live in his people, to join himself with his people, to be brethren, to have his own brethren. Do you remember Joseph? We were given all of these stories as well. Joseph among his brethren, you know. Mm. You know, <coughs> yeah. the whole idea that that God didn't, there's no intention of being separate from his people. You know, yeah. I'm holy and you're not. Worship, you worship, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the wrong spirit altogether, okay? Yeah. So that's what we looked at. <coughs> so this age, God has taken out of people, electing them as sons, 
<clears throat> and he has his elect going back down through the ages as well, by the way, okay? It's just that he's bringing us now into perfection with, with the Son, okay? As fellow workers, as one perfect man, remember that part we read that? <coughs> in 1 Corinthians 12, or two, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, of one perfect man, the head and the body, one man, okay? Glory to God, <clears throat> with his Son Jesus, his head. Romans 11, 5, so in this way, even so at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And again, it's, and grace has appeared to all men, okay? But it's, it's the understanding behind it as well, that grace having appeared to all men, you know, so all men in grace have been elected, okay? Because that's what election is, grace is the initiative of God towards every. Remember, I will draw all men, uh, <clears throat> they'll all be taught by God, okay? No man can come to me, but we stop that all of that. Mm. Lest the Father draws him. So you're looking at the situation of God's initiative in the person. Mm -hmm. And as we keep on saying, getting over yourself, it's of God. The whole thing is of God, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank God it is. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. I mean, even that thought alone means <coughs> let it go, let it go. And breathe, and Geraldine keeps telling me, let it go. Mm. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 3 now I've gone over this again because according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder I looked at it, you know, okay God is to do with every man, okay <clears throat> and the grace was given to Paul for as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and the foundation again grace. is grace <laughs> it's a foundation of grace it's a foundation of God's election Okay, mm -hmm. and he has given grace, <coughs> given grace to all men. And another bill is thereon. So let every man, t every man, again, every man, take heed who, not what. Remember, we looked at that last week. It's who you build, not what you build. Okay, mm -hmm. how you go about it. It's who you know. Okay, <coughs> for other foundation that no man can lay, that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. That's the foundation, and grace and truth come by. Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's the person, not the doctrine, okay? It's never a question of what you know, but of who you know, okay? Mm -hmm. That sounds very simple, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's probably the fourth thing you forget. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Verse 12, now if any, not special, <laughs> no, okay. nobody special, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, there's two kinds of material, okay? Every man's walk shall be made man. Ultimately, the walk that we do, ultimately, every man's walk can be made manifest, okay? <clears throat> and you'd be too, look, too busy looking at your own to notice anybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> you might think you'll see Johnny and Paddy's walk. You won't even see. You'd be, <laughs> you'd be hiding yourself. <clears throat> well, uh, glory to God, we won't be, okay? <laughs> so, so he says, uh, foundation, gold, silver, precious, and hay, water, stubble. Every man's walk be made manifest. It means revealed, okay? For the day shall declare, that's the day of Christ, when he's fully manifested, okay? And all the works are coming to judgment. Because it shall be revealed by fire. <coughs> and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is, okay? The quality, the nature, not the amount, okay? Again, you're going to have and the quality of the work. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Not the amount. Okay, that's, that's all right. Okay. Verse 14, that carried on, if any man's walk abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. And the reward is all, that's what grace is all about. Grace is all about a reward. Okay. Because <clears throat> God's not requiring things. God's in the business of giving. Okay. Of doing things and giving things to you. Do you understand? So I want to reward you, Rotin. I want to reward you. Glory to God, <clears throat> and, and I'm watching every man's work. I want to tell you how to get this reward as well. I'm going to show you, you know, <laughs> this is what you do to get <laughs> you know, Okay. And then he says in verse 15, if any man's work shall be born, he shall suffer loss. Loss in the sense of the loss of the reward. Okay. Because mm -hmm. every person will be saved. Okay. <clears throat> because his inheritance is a gift of grace. But he himself, with no reward, shall be saved, okay, if his works are burnt up. Mm -hmm. Yet so is by fire. <clears throat> so the following verses are meant, again, to direct us 
And that's what he means then by telling us this, to make us alive to this, okay? Know ye not that you are the temple of it. That's the very first thing that comes into there. If you forget that you're the temple of God, you can forget about this, okay? Do you understand what we're saying? You know, what, could, what difference does it make what you do if you don't realize who you are or you're like, that God is living in you as a temple, okay? <clears throat> so you can see straight away, coming into that full consciousness of who you are, you're the temple of the living God, you realize your works will change. That will affect your work. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Can you see what I'm saying? But if you're just hearing a, a gospel about grace and you want to get a reward, it's, it's to do with who is living in you. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. That the works come from them. Okay? Him shall God destroy, <coughs> shrivel, wither, or waste. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Okay? That's the foundation of your works, isn't it? Yeah? Why would your body do nothing if you, if you didn't, didn't know that? Like? Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive himself. No one else. When we said that, nobody else can deceive you. Okay? They can do their very, very best. But if you're living by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, He will guarantee that you'll not be deceived. Okay? And that's the whole idea. <coughs> you're going to have to follow something else to be deceived. All right? And if any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool. Doesn't that hurt you? Yeah. yeah. Think about it. Let him become a fool. Nobody wants to be a fool, so don't. No. Wants to be a fool. <laughs> that he may be wise, you know. But he means fool. <clears throat> Obviously, he means a fool in sense, in the sense of, you know, of mankind's, you know, pride. You know, man, what man has pride in. You know, mm. you become a fool in all of them things. Okay. There's a few other verses we can draw upon again about that, okay? So the elect are people who do not see themselves in any special way, okay? Well, you can see yourself as special in a special way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any special way as chosen instead of they see the place where they were and are chosen, okay? So election is to do with the place, okay? Not to do with the person. It's to do with the place where you were elected. Are we? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1 4, according as he has chosen us or elected us well. In him. In him. In him. And that's the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. If you forget that, you've gotten into yourself. You've got into yourself on how important you might be or what you should be doing. You wake up in him, you live your day in him, you're asleep in him, whatever the case, everything you say is in him. Yeah. Whatever you do is in him. Yeah. That's where you are chosen. Mm -hmm. That's where you were elected. So election is to do with the place. Even though every man has been elected, but where have they been elected? In him. In him, in him yeah. Yeah. So that's your, the focus of your whole life, is simply abiding in him, okay? That's the simplest, weakest place you can be in. Because in him, we are weak. Even Christ was weak in God. The weakness of God, the Bible says, is stronger than the strength of men. The weakness of God. Mm. So the whole idea of abiding in, in Christ is a place, staying in the place of weakness and foolishness, you know. Mm. Stay there. And you, you're going to be drawn out. People are going to draw you out. They're going to give you things to do and make a reputation. Make a name for yourself. <coughs> you're a nobody. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I think you see the picture there, yeah? We're chosen in him. Today people talk about being chosen and elected. They never talk about the place where they're elected. It's very clear, written down for you. Before the foundation, the foundation disruption of the world, remember the world was disrupted <coughs> and darkness came upon the world, remember that? And then he, he spoke into it, let there be light. <coughs> that we should be holy and without blame, blemish, before him, again, in love, okay? It's always in Him, okay? So 2 Corinthians 1.20, for all the promises of God, well? In Him are ye in a man. Definitely. There's no promises outside of Him, you know? Okay? 
Aye, and in him, again he says it again, in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us, okay? And 1 John 2, 28, and now little children abide in him, where the election is, okay? Because that's what grace is, you're elected by grace in Christ Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. And he said to himself, <clears throat> you did not choose me, but I chose you, okay? Because he had a, we know that he had a previous life with the Father, and he came Glory to God. And he says, I've chosen you, you know. That when he, may, he, may, he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him that is coming. He's going to come and he can be a total stranger to you, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so we are not just chosen, okay? Just let this sink into your heart, okay? We're not just chosen or elected. We are chosen, elected in him, okay? Glory to God. Mm. Remember this part here, Jude chapter 1, verse 6, and the angels which kept not their forced estate. Okay? It wasn't to do how wicked they were. They kept not their forced estate, but left their own habitation. He had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So you can see, <clears throat> the one thing you don't want to do is to leave the place of your habitation. Okay? Mm -hmm. And a, a person who has that assurance of being elected will know that. They know that. I have nothing in me. There's nothing in me whatsoever. So I'm going to stay in the place where, the, where, the, where everything is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You just know that. Because right? it's, again, it's a weakness. And you'll run to that place. Because when a man was convicted in the Old Testament of a crime, of killing somebody, or I don't know all the crimes that, he, that was in there, I can't remember now. <clears throat> but he would make it, he would run to a city of refuge. There were seven cities of refuge. Okay, that's when Israel were in the land, okay? Mm. There were seven cities designated as a refuge. Mm. And if he got into that city, nobody could touch him, okay, until until the authorities got to deal with the case, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was safe, nobody could touch him, but they could get him before he got to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And they could have, they could do what they wanted with him, okay? Mm. <clears throat> So therefore, but we are running into the city, of, which is the New Jerusalem, the city of Christ, okay? We run, that's what we have done. I was convicted as a criminal, so were you, okay? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I'm a murderer. Just making sure. I'm a murderer, you better watch it. <laughs> and, and you as well, you're a criminal as well. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not new, okay? We've been forgiven. But we're in him. Our forgiveness is in him. But if you go out with that tomorrow, you're going to start feeling guilty. And there's no power on there that can stop that. Only the power of the Spirit can give you that assurance, you know, which by grace. Mm -hmm. Give you the assurance that I'm nothing more powered. Do you know? Do you understand? So that's what that's what we're seeing. I'm I'm in I'm in him, you know. And I I, I got I have nothing here, no election here. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, because election is by grace in through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're not just chosen, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, we're all right there. Yeah. And that's why we're looking into it, <clears throat> so that you get a grip on it, you know, yeah. or let it get a grip on you, better still. 1 Corinthians 15, 24, 29, because, okay, you can sink into this now, okay, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men, because Christ has taken the lowest place, and he was given the highest place, okay. Yeah. For you see your calling, this is very interesting, okay, I remember looking at these a few months back, for you see a calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, and not many noble are called. He's not saying none, he's just saying not many. Okay? But God has chosen, okay, elected the foolish things of the world to confirm the wise, okay? Because God, if God's bringing the world into reconciliation, he has to get the lowest people. So that people <coughs> will see, you know, be able to see clearly an image of God. That, that see the image of Christ in the people. No point in presenting a big powerful God and put them all under my feet, you know. <laughs> it's the whole thing of reconciliation, which is totally different. You come up in weakness and you make your appeal. God's making his appeal to us through Christ. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Be reconciled to God. <coughs> And that's what we're talking about. So therefore it's a question of foolishness and weaknesses and so it, so a person has the opportunity to see what they're really like. Okay? So that what they think they are can crumble. 
Okay. And the base things, you chose the weightings of the wall to confound, yeah, Pat, the whole idea of confounding. You know when somebody comes up and does something for you, you're confounded, you know. Mm. And you had all these ideas and all of a sudden they, they upset you, you know, mm. because they were kind to you or something and they did something you didn't expect. Mm. You, you, you know, they're undoing me, that's the word you're using. <laughs> I was undone, mm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I had everything sorted out and all of a sudden this fella's undone me, you know. <laughs> The confirmed, okay, <clears throat> the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, okay, had God chosen, or elected, and that's all in the Lord Jesus Christ, because, you know, you would easily despise them, you know, yeah. and the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, okay, the things that, everything that has a reputation, that looks good, can be brought down, okay. That no flesh should glory in his presence. So that's that's the election of God. Now you, <coughs> you want to get out of that quickly. <laughs> Your flesh will scream. <laughs> it starts screaming, and instead of saying I'm elected, you think you're in the you know. <laughs> okay, so it's not a question of who has been chosen, but the place again, okay, where we were chosen. Just hammering that home, okay? The place prepared, remember that place? I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah. John 14. <clears throat> and in my father's house are many dwelling, are many habitations. Okay, he said that as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so again, it's the place of weakness, foolishness, nothingness, and despised. Okay. Philippians 3 9, and we remember Paul said that I'm going to be found in him. That's the, the place of election, to be found in him. Okay. Not having my own righteousness, again, the nail goes into the coffin every single time, driving nails into your coffin, okay? Which is of the law, the requirements, okay? That which is through the faith of Christ is the righteousness which is of God by faith, grace. We are saved by grace, election, through faith, okay? In Christ Jesus, in somebody else. You think of it this way, it's faith in somebody else, you know? And if he doesn't do the job, <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. in trouble. <laughs> Grace, an election, okay. You can't elect yourself, obviously, okay. Yeah. And some, people, some people do. <laughs> they put themselves forward straight away. Mm -hmm. So let us remain in the place where we were called and chosen. <clears throat> What's that? Let that which we heard in the beginning, yeah. What did you hear in the beginning? Do you remember what you heard in the beginning? Yeah. <laughs> no. I can tell you what I heard in the beginning. You know, I heard a singular call. I was being loved. I remember experiencing them because I remember the very first words. The very first, and I didn't know what about what I was talking about. I never I hadn't read the Bible. The very first words that me about. How come you've never told me about this love? I remember that so well. And they would asked me to explain what love was. I couldn't, but I knew. I knew that I had been loved at that moment, and I said, why didn't you tell me about it? I didn't know this love existed, you know? Yeah. And I was ready to go to my father, straight away, just like that. He'd leave the whole thing, drop out and go home to my father. But that's not of the planet, you know? <clears throat> well, it's just the whole idea, uh, what I heard in the beginning, you know? Yeah. And if, if I depart from that place, I'm in trouble, okay? I'm out of going away from the father, you know? So it's the place, the remaining in the face of what you heard in the beginning, the touch that you got, yeah. the heavenly touch of repentance of what you are yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stay there. I don't mean to condemn yourself. I'm just simply saying, remember that you need him. He's your breath. He's your very life. Okay? Yeah. That kind of a thing. Okay? Yeah. What you heard in the beginning, because many people go out of that. That's the, probably the first thing they can do. They just leave that place, you know? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right, okay. We all right? Yeah. We're obliged to go before the now because we all went here at the one time. That's true. <laughs> 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 we are some later <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Some come in at the end of the day, isn't that right? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And, some, yeah. and some of us were here for the heat, the heat and the sweat. We were, the exactly. we were walking all day. Yeah. Eleven, eleven yeah. And we don't give out about it. Eleven hour walker. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry. Yeah. 
our election in Christ be found in him, remaining in the place. Okay, that's what, that's what Paul is actually saying. Remain in the place where you're elected. Ephesians 1.4, calling us, he has chosen again and gone over this, elected us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. And when you know you're walking in a situation where I'm blameless, you have an assurance of your blamelessness, okay, and you're walking in the love of God, you know then that you're in him, because that's the witness of the Spirit. The Spirit bearing witness with you. There's nothing against you today. And you know it. You know what I mean? Like? That's true. And you have that sense of liberty and freedom and boldness, you know. Fantastic. You know it then, you're in him, you know. Do you understand? Because the spirit bears yeah. witness to Because yeah. 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 that's what he chose, to be holy and without. And the people saying today, they're not holy. You know, and without blame before him in love. You know, you know, you know. Yeah. Oh, dear God, this is great, you know. Yeah. The grace of God, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you know when you're loved by somebody is, is a fantastic thing, you know. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I know what he means at all here, God. Goodness me. Yeah. <laughs> Romans 8 29 and this is interesting for, for whom he did for no oh, I'm, I'm not taking people that take no when I go through this I, I'm dragging this out no but it's not because I think people are taking it's just the whole idea of nailing every one of these things is a nail in your coffin okay mm. for whom he for you well Exactly, yeah. You were foreknown in him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He also did predestinate. Well, mm -hmm. in him. <laughs> well done, Rosemary. <laughs> to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Well, in him. Okay. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. Well, <laughs> then he also called. Well, <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> and whom he called. Well, in him. Then he also justified. Well, in him. Whom, and whom he justified, then he also glorified well in him again. Shall we not then say to these things, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Well, in him. Okay. That's the story of your life. Okay. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not? There it is now with him. You don't want to be apart from him. Apart from him, you can do nothing. Nothing. Also, freely give us all things well in him. Yeah. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Well, it is God that justifies well. Okay. In other words, God takes full responsibility for your whole life. Amen. If you love him and walk with him, yeah. you answer to God. Everybody has to answer to God with your life. What they said to you, what they didn't say to you. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. What they could have done and didn't do or whatever. And if you stay in him, they have to answer to God. Not to you. Okay? Mm -hmm. And any vengeance is taken to God, please. That's so good. it's your life. It's not, you know, okay? Very good. So why would you go around thinking about this and thinking about that? And I wonder how this is going to work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why? Mm -hmm. Only take it on board. Take no thought. <clears throat> we are not just chosen, of course, but we're chosen out. Okay, that's the whole idea. We're chosen out of this world, out of the darkness, into marvelous light. All of them things, okay. In Ephesians 5, 3, <clears throat> verse 26, 27 as well. But fornication and all uncleanness, covetousness, wanting things, okay. Let it not be once named among you as become its saints, okay. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting. Which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks, okay? Yeah. For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idol, has any inheritance. Everybody's going into the kingdom, but they don't have any inheritance in it, okay? Christ and of God, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, as verse 26. It's the church, the bride, and they cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, because it's his workmanship. We are his work. Because he's, he's doing the work, going to present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but rather that it should be holy and without blemish. So that's the whole idea of putting on in corruption and immortality, okay? Because when you're putting on in corruption, you're putting on in immortality. Because in corruption can only live in immortality, okay? Yeah. yeah. 
that's what you're doing, you know, that's no small thing, okay? You know, people will laugh at you. Some Christmas will say, I'm putting on incorruption and immortality. But, you know what I mean, as if you could put it on, you know. But you are doing that. The attributes of God are all immortal and they're incorruptible. It's an incorruptible seal, as you know. All the attributes of God, kindness, they're all eternal, okay? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they're, they're all spiritual and eternal. So that's what you're actually doing. Yeah, you're putting on eternal things of God, yeah. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. If something is eternal, it's incorruptible. Mm -hmm. Because that which gets corrupted is temporary. Yeah. If something gets in, like a worm getting into an apple. You know, whatever the case might be, yeah. breaks the skin, gets got in, you know. But anything which is eternal, nothing got into it. It can't be corrupted, okay? So the gentleness and love and kindness and faith, faith, they're all spiritual, eternal. invisible, eternal, you know. You're putting on in corruption, in a mortal body. Yeah? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 5. Call it a thing what it is, yeah? <clears throat> but by the grace, again, it's election of God. This is very important, okay? This is very important. Because election takes all of this into account as well. Okay? If you know whether you're living in grace or not. Okay? You are what you are. So if you're feeling sorry for yourself, or measuring yourself, or checking yourself, or thinking, I should be this, and I could have been done, look at him, he got more than me. <laughs> you're not in grace. You're immediately just after stepping out of it. Okay? You're not content with God, in other words, okay? With what He has done in your life or made you who you are. Mm. So that is the most important thing and content but I don't it's the most important thing, but how do you separate these things? They're all in the grace of election of God, you know. Mm. The sense of, you know, I'm I'm not unhappy about who I am, where I am, what I'm and, and thank you, Father God, for whatever it is. Okay, no matter what situation is, I give you thanks and praise. Mm -hmm. Because that's, I'm in Christ Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Again, it comes back, that's the bottom line. I am whatever I am. You might be the ugliest thing on the planet, okay? By your parents, mm -hmm. you understand what I mean? Like, but God, <coughs> again, will take care of all of them things, ultimately. Give thanks for who you are, what you are, where you are, the job you have. Mm -hmm. How do you get out of the job you have? By giving thanks to God for it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You give thanks to God for everything. <clears throat> yeah, you know, let's say, just like Joseph in prison, you know. Yeah. You got it, you got to, look, you went to the very top. Yeah. I am what I am, whatever you are. And his grace, which was bestowed <coughs> upon me, was not in vain. You're nullifying the grace of God if you're looking at yourself and a little murmur in your heart. <laughs> okay, you're now nullifying you. Okay, you're nullifying your own election. <clears throat> but I laboured more abundantly than they all. Yet, he says, not I, but the grace, the election of his will, that's it, God, the will of God, which was with me. In other words, if you're completely content with God because you're his workmanship, and you're saying, thank you, Father, for everything I am, and immediately, peace, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. Okay, and then if there's nothing for you to do, God will make it plain to you. Ephesians 2.10, that's why Paul kept saying, he said, you're his workmanship, you're not your own, okay? You're his. So whatever you are, you are, okay? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them, okay? So God has, that's what election is. God created you ordained you, election, all of that, that you're going to walk in it. So, you're at peace straight away. If you're not at peace, you're complaining. You might think, oh, I didn't really, you are complaining. Mm. <laughs> you understand, yeah? Absolutely. If you're not at peace, there's something on the way. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 10, 12, not that we dare to classify, okay, or compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves, okay, you know, whether you're giving out by yourself or commending yourself, it's the same thing. You're not trusting in the Lord, okay? But when they measure themselves by one another, comparing themselves with one another, they're making a terrible mistake because everything comes from the Lord, okay? 
You're not content. What you, why would you compare yourself to another person? It's either to be worse or to be better. Oh, look at him, oh, look at him, you know. <clears throat> or else, oh, I, I'm much better than he is. What? What? And compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. Other translations say they're not wise, okay. Again, they're nullifying their own election. They're not, if you nullify grace, you're nullifying your election, okay. Mm. Philippians 4, 11, 13, not that I speak in respect of want. Again, here we are looking to the very same thing. <clears throat> in respect of want, for I have learned, and the Bible says grace appeared to all men, teaching them, okay. I have learned in whatever state I am, therewith to be content. content. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I learned to be content. In other words, I'm happy with God. I'm his workmanship. What work would you want on top of that? Mm -hmm. Icing on top of his workmanship. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I know how to be abased. I'm okay. I'm content when I'm abased. That's what he's saying. And I'm content when I abound. Okay, I learned to be content. <clears throat> Everywhere, in all things, I am instructed. See that part there? I highlight that. I'm being instructed by the Spirit. Okay, I'm being taught. I'm being instructed mm -hmm. to be content. Okay, mm -hmm. <clears throat> both to be full and to be hungry and to abound and to suffer need, to suffer in contentment. Okay, mm -hmm. extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah. And that's just life itself. You know what I mean? You know. I can do all things. Through Christ, which strengthened me again, Amen. and yet that's where you find them the foolishness and all of it. You find them in the most ordinary, basic things. Christ will strengthen you, okay? You meet him where you are, Christ God. okay? Amen. And that's the elect of people, yes, there they are, there, okay? 2 Corinthians 18 For not he that commended himself is approved, <laughs> but whom the Lord, that's the situation, whom the Lord commends. So the Lord is speaking to you and commending you. Yeah. I'm content. Amen. 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 All right, we, we try and do. Okay, I'll read this one. Maybe get to the other one next week. Is that okay? Yeah. <clears throat> well, because there's another aspect to the grace that we need to look at. I don't remember God asking me before I was born, okay? Before I was born, God didn't ask me, as far as I know, any questions. I don't remember God asking me what colour eyes I would like, okay, or hair, <laughs> or would I like how tall or handsome I would like to be, okay. He never asked me any of those questions. And he was making me, he was creating me, okay. Oh, you, yeah. Or what nationality, or whose son I would like to be, you know. He asked me none of those things. Mm -hmm. He didn't even, cons he was going to make me and he never even consulted me <laughs> what I would like to be. That's cheap, isn't it? <laughs> How many arms or legs would you like? Because some, some are born without these things, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you want to be poor or do you want to be rich? What, what would you have said anyway? <laughs> or what time frame would suit you? Which age would you like to have lived in, you know? Mm. Huh? Imagine giving all them options would be great, wouldn't it? Or would it? No. <laughs> Etc. Etc. And it goes on. The list could be endless. Okay. <laughs> he never consulted me about any of these things. He made all of these decisions through the election of his will. He decided. That his workmanship. Okay. And that began from the womb, or even before that, before time. Okay. He chose what we're going to be. So if you're fighting that, or rejecting that, or thinking something about what he has done. And they're moving in trouble, okay? It doesn't just be, it's the whole idea of God in every part of your life, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You're now fighting your own election. I am whatever I am by the grace of God, okay? So there are others who appear much less fortunate, aren't there, in this world? Amen. <laughs> than I, in many physical and mental ways. Some people mentally. Retarded, you know. Mm -hmm. Good thanks. Mm -hmm. I, I know. I, I, 
I know I'm all right, and I know you guys are all right, you know what I mean, like, but there's so many who are not, you know what I mean, like, and it's so easy for us to say that, but you do pray that they'll find the grace of God, because in the grace of God, they still can be content. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? I am what I am, and you are what you are. Yeah. And if you can find out what you are, and be content with you'll help me to find yeah. <laughs> in grace, okay? <clears throat> there is no, there is nothing left for us to do but to give thanks and believe he will make everything good from under this veil that we're living in, this veil of vanity, of futility that we all share together. But ultimately, God, he said, I'll wipe away every single tear from your eyes. I said that, I promise. From all the faces, I say about you, five English, I'll wipe away every tear from every eye, you know, ultimately. So you can see that this passing wall of vanity that we're living in the moment, this is not it, okay? Waking up to that alone is something. This is not the thing, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Amen. This is just another age in God. When he's walking out his plan, okay? Romans 9.20 mm -hmm. But nail, but oh man, <coughs> who art thou that replies against God? Now that was put in the part where Paul was talking about election. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. If you start replying to God and, and saying, finding fault with yourself, you're finding fault with his workmanship. O man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed, okay? Say to him that formed, why hast thou made me thus? So let us not be found in him not having a righteousness of our own, okay? Let us be found in him not having a righteousness of our own, okay? Again, with no murmurs, no complaints, and so on, okay? Amen. Glorious. Glorious things, you know, understand, get right into the whole thing with it, you know, don't go halfway, okay? Amen. Then you can, you can find joy, the fruit of the Spirit, mm. the of grace, they begin to pop up when you're content and happy, and you know that nothing's required, all of a sudden, mm. Mm. just release comes, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Just come and you say, yeah.